Hello, sophomore families and students. I am so glad that you are taking a few moments and listening to our sophomore fall planning um, webcast. I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Mrs. Everett and I am the guidance counselor here at SCA. And um, if we've met before in our freshman planning meetings or if this is your first year, I just wanted to welcome you um, to 10th grade at SCA. I first off wanted to share with you a part of our vision and mission at um, SCA for our guidance program. We want to enhance our students' experience in achieving academic excellence. We are a college preparatory program and we want to make sure our students have everything necessary and possible in order to excel onto the next level of their education, whether that be college or career, um, some kind of vocational training, or even um, military, or whatever God would have for them. So our program focuses on assisting students to make wise decisions as they seek God's will for their lives and as they plan their careers, develop relationships, and form their worldview based upon um, the principles of God's Word. So specifically, we are talking about sophomore year, and unfortunately, sometimes sophomore year gets a bad rap because it um, gets the, the name the sophomore slump. And so we don't want you to have a sophomore slump. We want you to have a comeback year or even a, just a a great year moving forward if you had a wonderful sophomore year. So we really want you to focus in on um, starting a great sophomore year. So one of the very first things that is exciting for sophomore year is your um, opportunity to join National Honor Society. This does not start until the 10th grade. Um, and so students in the 10th, 11th, and 12th grade are able to be inducted in April of each year. Now, we say April, but sometimes it's a little bit earlier, March, or even late February, just depending upon when the induction is scheduled in the school calendar. Um, but what happens is in January, students who are eligible will be given an application to apply. In order to receive an application, you need to meet all of the criteria. The first one is they must be an example of academic excellence. That means they are maintaining a 3.65 cumulative GPA, carrying at least two honors courses in their academic load. They must have strong moral character, and that's evidenced by no suspensions or referrals um, in their discipline record. Then we also have um, an additional requirement for induction, that is service. So 20 hours of community service documented in the guidance office. Um, I tell all of my sophomores, make sure you have those turned in before Christmas of every year because we do evaluations on their community service hours in January. And at the end of January, those applications will go out. So if they haven't turned them in, um, by by Christmas time, there's a chance they may not um, be able to get their application. So make sure you get those 20 hours of community service documented in the guidance office by Christmas time. Um, once they have that 3.65 GPA, they have no um, disciplinary issues and they have their 20 hours of community service. In late January, the National Honor Society sponsor will pass out applications to those students meeting the criteria only students meeting the criteria will receive the application. Um, they will complete the application. All applications are reviewed through a teacher administration evaluation process. And then what happens is then they are in, they are tapped to be inducted. We notify them in chapel in our tapping ceremony. And then all parents are notified for the official induction, which is later on in the spring. Um, so that date is on the school calendar. But like I said, it typically happens between late February and early April of every year. So be looking out for National Honor Society if that's something you're working toward. You want to double check your GPA um, and make sure you have those community service hours documented. If for some reason you don't meet the criteria this year, that's okay. This is not your only time that you can be inducted. You are reevaluated in 11th and 12th grade every year. Um, those are for students who aren't able to join in 10th grade. If you are inducted in 10th grade, you are in National Honor Society for the remainder of high school. You do not need to be re-inducted every year. Another thing we really want to focus in on in 10th grade is your college and career planning. And I encourage um, families to start having conversations with your students, asking yourself the question, where do you see yourself in five to 10 years? And spurring on some really productive family conversations about what uh, a student dreams their future could be about. 
take time and pray as a family um, about the future and what God would have for you. And then take opportunities to explore colleges and career fields. Uh, tenth grade is a great time um, over spring break and summer to go view colleges. It's never too early. Colleges will let you come to their campus at any time. There is no age requirement. Community service, we want our students to continue focusing in on community service each year. We want you to focus on building your base of community service hours. It's not just about quantity, but quality. And we want you to document, document, document those hours. Don't forget. The community service log is available for download on the guidance section of the SCA website. And so um, you can download that and fill that out at any time. Always make sure to turn it in to Mrs. Davis in the high school office and she will make sure to get those documented for you and you can always review your documented log in RenWeb so that's available to you at any time. One of the important reasons why we focus in on community service is because of the Florida Bright Future Scholarship. If you've um, you've probably heard about this before, it's a very popular scholarship in Florida. It's available to students who graduate from Florida high schools and choose to attend Florida colleges or universities. So there's two levels of the scholarship. The first level is called the Florida Medallion Scholarship. This pays um, about 75% of your um, tuition at a state university or community college. It works out to be about 159 dollars a credit hour. Now that was this past year. It changes from year to year. So just know that this can change. This is this coming year's um, requirements. So um, $159 per credit hour is how much it would pay for four years while you're in college. So that's a good chunk of money. In order to receive this scholarship, students must meet these pieces of criteria by the time they graduate. They must have a 3.0 weighted GPA in their core academic classes. The, there are 16 core academic classes which I'll review in a moment. They must have 75 hours of community service documented in the guidance office by the time of graduation. Now there is an update. If you saw this information last year, there has been a change. The state of Florida has changed the um, SAT and ACT score requirements um, and that is for the class of 2021 and moving forward 22, 23, 24, etc. They must either have a 1210 SAT or a 25 ACT. So one or the other. It doesn't have to be both but this is is and um, the SAT score did increase by about 40 points. The Florida Academic Scholars pays 100% of tuition and $300 towards books each year, all four years of college. As long as by the time you graduate high school, you've maintained a 3.5 weighted GPA in your 16 core academic classes. You have 100 hours of community service documented in the guidance office, and the SAT score has changed to a 1330. It, the um, ACT score has stayed the same with a 29. So that is an update that you will want to be aware of moving forward that will be required for the class of 2021 and um, in future classes. These are the um, academic requirements for Bright Futures. They must have four English classes, four mathematics classes with Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2, plus one additional math class above Algebra 2, three science classes, two with lab components, so that's biology and chemistry, um, three social science classes, U.S. history, world history, a half credit of government, and a half credit of economics, and two consecutive years of a foreign language, so that would be like Spanish 1 and Spanish 2. They couldn't take two um, level 1 classes, so they couldn't take Spanish 1 and Latin 1. That would not meet the requirement. Now, the great thing about these are is that um, Bright Futures requires these, but these are all SCA graduation requirements. So all of our students that graduate um, from SCA will have these courses in their um, in their transcript. So they don't have you don't have to worry about getting these in addition to graduation requirements. These are already are graduation requirements. And I also. Um, wanted to make a note to you that if anybody chose to take um some students took pre-algebra in middle school, and that is not a high school credited class, therefore it does not count towards Bright Futures. I always like to clarify that because sometimes it can be confusing um, for some families, so I just clarify that.
In regards to preparing for the SAT and ACT, all of our students in 9th, 10th, and 11th grade take the PSAT, which is a preliminary SAT. It is on October 16th this year. It starts at 7.50 a.m. It is required for all freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. It provides practice for the SAT, but it also provides additional practice for the NMSQT. That's the National Merit Scholars Qualifying Test. That's the PSAT test that they take in 11th grade. If they score within a certain range, they do qualify for additional scholarships. We had a few students this year in our junior class qualify as a National Merit Scholar, um, and so they have the opportunity to apply for 7,600 scholarships that um, that not every student is able to apply for, but, be, but because of their performance on the PSAT, um, they have the opportunity to um, apply for these scholarships. So I encourage all of my freshmen, sophomores, and juniors to take this PSAT seriously. It can really help them and benefit them in the future. Um, colleges do not see these scores. They do not count towards their college admission, but it is excellent, excellent practice for the SAT. And it will also provide you access to Khan Academy. Once you receive your scores, you're, you will receive your scores um, in early January, early to mid-January, um, maybe a little bit earlier, just depending on if College Board gets them graded and back to us quickly enough before the Christmas break. But you will also receive access to Khan Academy. Khan Academy is an online SAT tutorial um, service that is free, and it will actually import your PSAT scores and provide personalized practice for the SAT based upon your PSAT scores. So it's a really great option and opportunity um, for our sophomore students. So mark that on your calendar. You want to make sure you're at school that day because this is a very, very important test. A lot of our sophomores start thinking about college. In the future, you may not have it all figured out yet. That is okay. We just want you to start preparing and thinking for the future. So number one, always read. Explore your world through reading. We want our students to take the most rigorous schedule possible for them through their senior year. Every student's different, so we look at each individual student, but we want you to challenge yourself through rigorous classes. Participate in extracurricular activities. Take advantage of leadership opportunities in in school, in your community, in your church, travel, and also participate in summer programs. SCA offers a lot of um, study abroad and mission trips that you can take advantage of, but um, also there are great programs within the community, and I'm also always happy um, to share those with you as well. So those are great ways as a 10th grader where you can start preparing for college. We also want you to start building your college resume. This looks a lot like a job resume, but it has a list of your high school activities and awards. It's a great tool for college visits and scholarships. Um, it showcases your talents and abilities. So we want you to continue building that your 10th grade year. You're mostly gonna utilize it in your senior year, but it's good to start building it now so you're not scrambling when it comes to senior year to pull all that together. A lot of students will choose to include it in their scholarship applications. If you need help, please come see me. I'm happy to help you with that. That. Um, I also like to keep copies in my office so that I can pass them along to recruiters and college representatives. I have samples of college resumes on the guidance um, webpage. So if you go to scacrusaders.com and click on guidance, you will be able to see samples of college resumes that you can download and you can model yours after if you wish. One great thing um, about um, high school is we have semester exam exemptions. So I always try and review this with all of our students. This is something new we started last year. We're gonna continue it um, for 10th grade, fall and spring exams, 9th and 10th grade students can exempt up to two exams each semester as long as they have six or fewer absences. That includes excused or unexcused absences. It does not count school business absences, but just excused or unexcused absences. Um, after Thanksgiving, we'll be emailing out to all of our students um, the exam exemption form that where they must fill it out, and then they must also have your parent sign it. And then one week to prior exams, it will be due. Um, the high school office will review it, check your attendance, and then we will send out approval of your exam exemptions about um, a few days before exam starts. Um, approval is subject to your attendance, um, potentially your grades, but just really solely we focus in on, on attendance, and that includes your attendance during exam review week. And we send confirmation of approval will be sent by email the Friday prior to exams. So as long as you're managing your attendance well, um, you should be able to exempt at least two 
exams this fall and spring. If you have any questions about attendance or exam exemptions, you can speak to Mrs. Schock, the Dean of Student Services. She oversees all attendance issues in regards to exam exemptions and she'd be happy to help you with that. So as we wrap up our sophomore webcast, I just want to recap a few things for you. We want you to recap, um, we, I want to recap your goals for your sophomore year. We want you to grow spiritually and in the Lord, continue building relationships that honor Christ, um, continue to build your GPA, earn good grades, and build as strong a GPA as possible, get involved in extracurricular activities. That means here at school or within your community and church, start exploring the future and um, future as far as college and careers are concerned, and then follow that sophomore year timeline. I'm going to provide that in the email that I sent out to you. It's also on the guidance um, page of the SCA website. This gives you a breakdown year by, um, not year by year, but um, for the year, season by season, how you should be focusing and preparing as you're looking towards graduation and the future. I have some resources for you. As I've mentioned a few times, is our SCA guidance website that's located at scacrusaders.com. It has great resources for our 10th grade class. I would encourage you to go on there and explore all of those resources. You will see the sophomore timeline. We have a college admissions handbook. And also this spring, in um, early February through early March, I will be meeting one-on-one -on -one with sophomore students. So I meet with all of my high school students. They all have the opportunity to meet with me throughout the year. And I schedule my 10th grade grade meetings um, January to February up through early March. So I will be sending an email out to you guys after Christmas break letting you know that it's time to um, start scheduling your 10th grade meetings. There will be an electronic um, link that you'll be able to sign up for a meeting time that works best for you. Um, if they are for the students, um, parents are not required to attend, but you are always welcome if you wish to join in with your student. So those meetings are going to happen after the first of the year. We want you to continue to settle into 10th grade now this first semester and we'll meet um, after the first of the year, January, February, up through early March. Those sophomore guidance meetings will be going on. So keep your eye on your email in early January 2020. So we want you to have a great year. You can always feel free to reach out to me. And this is Everett. My contact information is here on the screen. We're here to help you if you would need anything. Thank you so much and have a great day, SCA.